promised you one more thing. Let's look at taxes. Now, right now, their tax rate's at zero. The reason, again, we, we talked about this a little bit, the withdrawal order, we're using this bank money first. Bank money doesn't have taxes on it. But this right here, churning in the background, this 351-167, it's going to have some taxes on it one day. So we need to do something about that. So what we're going to do, and we've already prepared this, we're going to look at a tax tracker optimization. So what we're going to look at is doing some Roth conversions. And I'll show you what, what we're going to do. You see this transfer over here? We're going to do some IRA transfers, and these are Roth conversions. Now, we're just going to do a blanket Roth conversion. Obviously, we're going to have to adjust this every year because in the year 2026, taxes are going to go up. So we might not be able to do this Roth conversion or this Roth conversion. That's something that we have to look at our quarterly reviews on to make sure we're moving in the right direction. All right. So let's look at their taxes. Now, 2024. We've done the Roth conversion. Look at this. Our projected federal tax rate is still zero. Drew, why is that? Why is it zero? Well, let me tell you. We're using this bucket of money for income. We're doing Roth conversions on this money. But we're also using this money to pay the taxes. But remember, our tax rate's at zero. So we're essentially being able to sock away a bunch of this Roth IRA money tax-free. There's our standard deduction, and we're doing it at zero. We go to retirement. At 100, we got $1.1 million saved for retirement. The big thing I want to look at is at 80, look at this. We've got $81,000 in forced required minimum distributions, 202 in the bank. Our IRA is at 438, and we've got a Roth conversion account of 191. So we have $191,000 now of tax free retirement investing accounts, which we didn't have before. So we weren't able to get all of it done. We probably could get all of it done if we extended the program. Again, I'm a little hesitant with the year 2026 on saying, hey, this is something we're going to be able to extend you know, into 2030 or whatever, but we're on the right track. And if you look at the comparison here, current scenario, this is the Roth conversion scenario. At 100, we've got 1 million 20, right? You see that? There's the RMDs, which is you know, been taxed money. There's our bank money. There's our IRA. Here's our Roth conversion. There's our forced RMDs. There's our bank. There's our IRA. There's our Roth conversion. Now, if Jimmy and Sharon had kids, what kind of money do you want your kids to inherit? You want them to inherit Roth money, bank money, and this forced RMD, which we just basically put in 1090. It's called 1099 interest. We just put in a checking account. This right here, this 152203 has got to follow the new 10-year structure. So when your kids inherit it, they got to have that thing like drained in 10 years. Now, I know my kids and I know kids that I work with, um, they probably pulling up in a Lamborghini saying, where my 152,000? I want my land, I want to pay for this Lambo. But when we're thinking about legacy, this Roth conversion, it's got to be out in 10 years as well, but it's tax-free. So now they're pulling up in two Lamborghinis, right? They, I got two Lambos maybe a G-Wagon from Mercedes or something, okay? Now, another big number to think about too is lifetime taxation. The lifetime taxation for Jimmy and Sharon Frugal, 278 in the current scenario. That means retiring at 61, dying at 100. How much in taxes are they going to pay? Approximately 278 versus 183 doing the Roth conversion. So we're doing Roth conversions and we're still paying less taxes over time. Again, that's what we want to look at. A financial EKG is what we want to do if you're thinking, hey, can I retire at 61 with $550,000?